to get to a point where you live a life of pre-forgiveness, where I just decide like my peace is so important and so expensive to me that it's not worth giving up. Hey everyone, this is Kim O'Neill from the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show, and you're listening to the Going North podcast with the hilarious Dom Brightman. Be sure to subscribe to his show so you don't miss any episodes. And remember, every day is always a new day. This episode is sponsored by one of my favorite humans on the planet and one of the top listeners of this show, Stan the Man McCloskey, for his awesome audiobook, Divorce is Worse Than Death. You can check him out on episode 292.5. The link will be in the show notes. And also, yours truly is the voice behind the audiobook version of the book. So after you're done listening to this, or while you're listening to this, go on ahead, head over to audible.com, click on the wonderful link, purchase that audiobook by yours truly, and support my man Stan. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, it's the Going North Podcast, and we got one heck of a super special, awesome human for you today, because my goodness, today's guest, a 34-year-plus wellness coach, Mindset Pro, you heard that right, folks, a Mindset Pro, not a Mindset Novice, speaker, best-selling author, entrepreneur, certified divorce coach, and wellness expert with three science degrees and 27 certifications. My God, my God, this woman has a brain on her shoulders, y'all. And to put a little icing on the cake, she leads with a spirit, mind-body approach to well-being and speaks on forgiveness, purpose, joy, and love. So let's give it up for the knowledgeable, amiable, and capable Kelly A. Calabrese. How you doing, Kelly? I'm doing awesome, Don. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes, indeed. Fun on the bun, indeed. My goodness, my goodness. So with all this wonderful knowledge, my goodness, is there anything that Kelly cannot do? Kelly cannot do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try and stay in my lane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, because my goodness, my goodness, like with all of that stuff you're doing, still young, far from retirement age, and Still kicking lots of butt out there. Like, <laughs> it's like, man, like, what is she going to do next? Is she going to go to space soon? Like, is, it, is she going to take over, like, the planet Venus finally so they can really save one from Venus? I might have to put that on my vision board <laughs> for 2022. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe I need to do that. My goodness, vision board, vision board, vision board. More like a life full of vision indeed, because if I'm not mistaken, like, when you were... 13 you had a list of goals to accomplish and i believe you accomplished all of them right <laughs> wow you have done your homework so when i was 13 i did write quite a few goals down and yeah pretty much every one of those things happened and i wrote down i'd be an exercise therapist i'd build my own house i would speak in italy i'd marry a man 10 years older than me i've had two kids i'd drive a mercedes i'd own health clubs and everything i wrote down at 13 happened that's right writing it down and making it happen so was it intuition that led to that activity like what was what was the thought process or i guess was it a spirit process behind it it was probably both when i think back i mean building my own house my dad was a builder so that was something that i desired to do i thought rich people drove mercedes so i just i just picked that car i've had 10 mercedes so i've made that happen multiple times I always loved fitness. I loved when I was running, dancing, jumping, swimming, cheerleading, softball. I was like, what do people not get about this? Like, I love this endorphin rush and I want to help people do this. And I also hate when people are sick and I am addicted and in pain. And so I want to help them not do that. And I think I thought boys were really immature. So I said, I'm going to marry a man 10 years older than me. <laughs> so this is my 13 year old logic at the time. And Italy, I have Italian heritage and no one in my family, you know, for a couple generations had been there. And I just thought, wow, my, my leather and my, my food is probably there. So I think I want to go there and it would be nice to speak and get paid while I was there. I like to get uh, paid when I'm traveling. Ah, 
Amen to that indeed. It was also being in a movie in that diary too, because I believe you're part of the uh, Compass documentary, actually. I think that was 2009, right? Yes, yeah. And then now I'm in a, a new series coming out called Success Sisters, but The Compass was a fabulous movie. Yeah, it kind of came out along the time where The Secret was happening. So it was a lot of personal development people just coming in and helping people get from where they are to where they want to be. But people have called me and said, I didn't commit suicide because of what you said in that movie. And so it, it really did make a difference. It's still available. You can get it for free. Uh, you search The Compass movie, you'll find it. Oh, good. Well, there you go, folks. Check that out like all the library books. Check it out, y'all. My goodness. So with all of those things you've accomplished, like what are you excited about for the future? Because I know super achievers don't like to stay still at all. <laughs> this is true. So right now I'm committed to empowering women to overcome the fear, confusion, frustration, and grief from divorce to help them just create a fabulous bonus life. So really helping women heal after relationship breakups is one of the big goals for this year. Ah, good, good, good indeed. Yes, indeed, because I'm pretty sure business has probably soared in the past uh, year or so <laughs> after the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, well, the pandemic has affected relationships, actually. It's interesting what it's doing with divorce and people not getting married and people waiting to get married and um, people asking for prenuptial agreements. So the pandemic has definitely affected the way people see relationships. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So my goodness, so what led you to become a divorce coach? Because I know it's, uh, you went through a very interesting and I'm pretty sure very painful divorce when you get into the details of how the whole separation ended. So what led you to become a divorce coach? <laughs> Yeah, well, from the pain comes purpose. I've done that my whole life. So yeah, my divorce was totally a shock to me after, you know, being together 25 years and it took me to my knees. It really emptied me out. And I realized that I wasn't the only one when I was getting divorced. I had about eight friends also getting divorced and I watched what everyone did. And when you're in that much pain, you're going to do something. And I wanted people not to, you know, run into the arms of another man or just escape or isolate or get addicted or, you know, whatever else they even exercise, you can over exercise. So I wanted them to do something healthy and it's painful. And I see too many people who get stuck. So they, you know, when they walk in the room and you feel like that, oh, they are really bitter. Or, wow. They're really depressed or angry or wherever it is that they get stuck. I don't want them to stay there. It, it's a life event and it's for a moment, but it's not for forever. And being a life coach for 35 years, I can help them walk through that in a healthy way and, and have some fun and joy again. Oh, yeah, that's right. The F and a J, that fun and joy indeed. That's right indeed. Yeah, because my goodness, because when I listen to some of your past interviews and how it all happened, because I believe it was fully rude, like, well, one, like, what more would divorce you? Like, my goodness, like, <laughs> like with all this wonderful positive energy you have, still freaking fabulous, still going to be remaining fabulous for a while because you believe in staying fit in the mind, body, and spirit. And, of course, like, if I'm not mistaken, what was it? Your birthday, anniversary, and Christmas was serving your divorce papers? <laughs> yes, the divorce papers came on my 49th birthday, and it was a pretty traumatic low point. He had moved out, and you know, I had to sell the house and get the kids situated and changing schools and all that kind of stuff. And it was move day, and I was supposed to be on a cruise with my friends and clients celebrating my birthday, and I had to move that day. There was nothing they could do to change it. So I missed out on the cruise. All my friends were going, you know, moving is back breaking. So your back's throbbing and broken nails and trying to figure it all out. And I literally sat down on the hearth of the fireplace, just slumped over and exhausted when the doorbell came. And it was the constable <laughs> serving me divorce papers on my birthday. And yeah, I was in a stranger's house. I've owned my own house since I was 22, but this was just a temporary thing to keep the kids in the school district. And so yeah, it was definitely a low, low moment. And uh, it took about 30 days for the divorce to go through because you have to wait 30 days in the state of Texas. Uh, but then it got reopened on Valentine's Day, which when you're a single person who's newly divorced, yeah, Valentine's Day is already a challenging day. 
And so I was like, really? Um, and then the final papers came on what would have been our 25 year anniversary and the day my son would have graduated high school <laughs> if he wow. stayed in the original school, but he moved schools. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, man, talk about vindictive. <laughs> what? Yeah, and, and to be honest, I don't even think it was intentional. I honestly don't even think he knew. <laughs> like, I really <laughs> don't think he's that mean spirited, just maybe not paying attention, kind of. Not sensitive, it's more <laughs> the case. Uh, yeah, because when I heard that, I'm like, God dang, I'm like, wow, I may have secretly an evil genius this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think more, more on the side of foolish, I think, than genius. <laughs> the other side of the ditch. <laughs> Uh, other side of the ditch. That's right, because that's where the water goes. <laughs> Let me stop. But <laughs> oh man, uh, but my goodness, my goodness. So with all of this, if also if not mistaken, with the divorce, coaching, you have so many interests. So my goodness, what do you think is the major key that's really helped you to hold it all together and continuously? advance because if i'm not mistaken you believe there's a single well maybe not a single but there's a particular number one key to living a life of freedom what do you think that is and why yeah i mean for me it's faith that was the thing that kept me going i don't know how you do it without faith like if you don't believe there's something bigger than you that has a purpose and is orchestrating everything going on that you don't know about i think that's you know probably a pretty sad place to live from so my faith helped me but one of the things that really moved the lever in my healing was forgiveness and it was for myself. I, I was holding my own feet to the fire. I was burning myself. Like, you have to stay here and be a failure. <laughs> and, and finally, I got to the day where I'm like, okay, no, you're not a failure. This is a moment. And I forgave myself because this wasn't supposed to happen to me. I did all the right things and I was a good wife. And, um, but it did. So you have to get back up again. You have to be resilient. And I had to really stop. Uh, I wouldn't say hating myself, but just feeling like a failure and giving myself grace and forgiving myself was a, a big part of it. Ah, uh, there we go. Dates, right? Yeah, because uh, forgiveness is a major thing, but also the whole self-forgiveness that I feel is sometimes a lot of us tend to forget. It's like, hey, let's uh, forgive uh, our enemies for ourselves, you know. Folks usually say forgiveness is for ourselves, and it's so true. But hey, like, are you going to forgive yourself for yourself? And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I'm not a perfectionist. Okay, okay. Okay, I guess I'll have to come to reality about that. Oh, I had pie, darn it. Uh, I knew I should have pet a penguin instead. Nah, I guess I got to <laughs> give myself for that and not do that again. But yeah, it's definitely so true about the whole self-forgiveness piece. So what helped you to really get to that point where you're actually able to forgive yourself for that? Actually, it was 4th of July weekend and I was invited, you know, all the places come to the barbecue, come on the boat, whatever. And I just was in such a low, like victim place. Like the world is happening to me. There's nothing I can do. I don't want to show up at the party and be like, everyone's got to lift you up because you're so down and sad. And so I said, I'm not getting off this couch until I figure this out. And someone had given me a book two years prior on forgiveness. It was called Forgiving Forward. And I'm like, I'm not getting off this couch so I figure this out. <laughs> and I sat there and I read this book and I sobbed. And, you know, I was able to forgive my former husband actually a lot easier than myself. And like something inside me was just holding this in that, no, you're this failure now. And I would not give myself permission to release it. And I finally just did after reading through this and realizing that the highest level of forgiveness is to forgive the person in the area that they hurt you. So for example, my former husband, he was re-engaged within a month of our divorce and remarried really quickly. And I can say that I wish him and his new wife nothing but the best. Like I don't have a bitter thorn in me at all about that. I really, really do. But to get to a point where you live a life of pre-forgiveness, where I just decide like my peace is so important and so expensive to me that it's not worth giving up. So I'm not going to let the guy who cuts me off like it's ruin my day or some bad news or someone, you know, coming at me. I have no idea what's going on in their life. I'm just not going to receive it anymore, but I'm going to forgive whether they receive it or not. It, it doesn't even matter to me. I'm just not going to walk around being easily offended. And so it's a whole new posture where I'm not looking for, you know, what, why would I even be so easily offended? Like what is inside me that's letting me so quickly get 
so offended by every little thing. So if I do find myself getting offended, I'm really quick to go, you know what? It's, it's not worth it. I need to stay on path, on track, and just in a place where I have this freedom. Ah, powerful indeed. Powerful indeed. A lot more folks need to carry that with them. I'm not being so easily offended because I feel like we're in that era now where hey well there's there's a lot of empaths out there a lot of sensitive people but there's also some people that could be living with a victim mentality that let themselves become so easily offended at things and it's great that you have that stance on life and it's a powerful one indeed and i'm pretty sure it took you some time to get to that point too it definitely did. It was about two years in. You know, I wish it was the first thing that happened, but it wasn't. I mean, <laughs> I had to do other things first. I had to redefine my purpose. I had to really um, renew my mind, you know, because you keep telling those stories over and over and over about the past. And it's not even the way we remember it, the way we're telling it over time, the story changes. But you just bring all that emotion flooding back in when you look at this was unfair, this was unjust, and it was. I mean, if people heard my story, it was terrible. They would cry for me, but I don't have to look far to see someone who had a way better, you know, way worse story than I did. And I'm not minimizing, you know, abuse and horrible things that happen to people and accidents and that kind of stuff. But you have to at some point decide, okay, that was the past. I need to release it. If I'm thinking about the future too much, I'm going to live in fear. If I'm thinking about the past too much, I'm going to live in regret. But if I just sit here and breathe and get present and gratitude was really a superpower for me. And so I started being really intentional about not going to bed until I filled a page with things I was thankful for, for the day. You know, at first it started really mechanical, like, well, I took my vitamins, I fed the dog. I, you know, but then I started going throughout my day, like, wow not everyone gets to talk to Dom today. Like, how cool is this? I get to be on the, you know, this show. And that that's incredible. So you start going throughout your day looking for things to be thankful for. And that just changes your whole perspective because there's this whole flow going on of giving and receiving. And you can't just always be a giver. You also have to open up your receiver and be willing to receive good things from other people. Otherwise, you're stealing their joy of giving to you. So it just changed my perspective. Oh, yeah, that's right. With all the quarters and the nickels, indeed, you got to change the perspective. That's right. That's right, indeed. You got to change perspective, indeed. So, my goodness, so since faith is big in your life and forgiveness, and I know that you're a big fan of the scriptures, that means you're also a Christian, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's correct. So, wait, so how did you find Christ as your personal Savior? Because I always invite fellow Christians to share their testimonies on this podcast. Awesome. Well, I did grow up Catholic. I went to the same Catholic school my mom went to in New York and, you know, Italian, New York, Catholic. It was kind of the culture up there. I'm now in a suburb of Dallas. But when we came here to the buckle of the Bible belt, you know, there is no shortage <laughs> of great churches. And it was like my heart just opened. I mean, I was just crying every Sunday like I was the only one in the room and it was just speaking to my soul and then one Sunday, they just had, you know, like baptism Sunday and made a decision that day and just went on this quest that every time the church was open, I was there. They had their, you know, women's conference, leadership conference, praise conference, worship. I mean, I was at everything. I did the uh, prayer team, the worship ministry. I just did everything I could possibly do to dive in to really understand and create that relationship and it's it's been a journey, but it's been an awesome one. I wouldn't trade it. I wish I had started sooner, but I was 30, maybe 38. So I was a little bit later. Yeah, there we go. But hey, better late than never, as they say, right? That's right. Not too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Be like an old priest with a cane in the bed. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Oh man! So since this is far from your first uh, rodeo on the guest side of the game on these magical podcasts, is there a question that you wish you would receive more often? Um, that is a great question. I love questions like that. Um, yeah, you know, we're always talking about things to do. You know, and I love creating vision boards and having a good morning routine and all this, but. I also like to talk about what not to do, you know, because there's only so much time that we have. We have the same 24 hours and we're like, I'm going to, you know, add a diet and do this and quit smoking. But sometimes we have to look at 
what should we not do? So a lot of times with my clients, I'll start with, once we figure out what they want, a to don't list. Like, what do you need to cut out? What are you doing? And a lot of times it's kindergarten things. Like, you know, <laughs> that you know, you know that this is not good for you. Like, you know, watching six hours a day of Netflix, you, you know. So looking at what do I need to cut out that's not serving me? What do I need to cut out that's not bringing me joy? That maybe it was good for a season, but it's everything I have in my life now has got me to this point. So if I want to get to the next level, I have to stop doing some things. And I think a lot of people don't think about that. They just try and add more and then they go, I have no time. And then they're not successful and they defeat themselves. So don't, you know, practical things like don't keep hitting the snooze button. For example, when you want to get up at a certain time and start your day or don't go through the drive through or don't drink a bottle of wine every night, like whatever it is, but also don't conform. Um, don't just look about, um, holding on to the old things. Don't judge. Don't gossip. Don't, you mentioned perfectionist. I was one recovered perfectionist. Uh, don't be fearful. Don't live in the past. Don't overspend, you know, that kind of stuff. Don't overschedule yourself. Um, th those kind of things. So you just always looking at your life, like what's working, what's not, what do I need to do more of? What do I need to do less of? What do I need to start? What do I need to stop? So sometimes starting with the, what do I need to stop is, is a freeing good place. Like, yeah, that's not serving me anymore. Just because I used to hang out with these people. Maybe that was for a season. It's time to move on. Yeah, that's right. Got to move on indeed. That's right. Just can't be pepper all the time. Sometimes you got to grow up and become old bay seasoning. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's, indeed. right. <laughs> that's right. Call oh, that seasonings greeting. So my goodness. And I love what you said there about the whole list of things to stop doing or to don't list. Because the thing is, it's so true. Like, oh yeah, here's a to-do list that keeps growing like a giant Great Wall of China. As opposed <laughs> to the to don't list is like, oh, <laughs> I'm sure I could put stuff on this list. But this whole new series on Netflix is freaking amazing. Like, it's, it's, it's calling me. It's calling me. The couch is calling me. If I can just veg out and, like, be hip ties for six hours let's go for it but it's like no like you gotta avoid those wonderful things in these love the fact that you brought that up as well yeah and do that once in a while. i mean i'm all for celebrating and enjoying yourself it's not all just work and hard things i mean you need to celebrate and i i think you know again we talked about that ditch there's people on the opposite end of the ditches where it's all just, you know, avoidance and just play and pleasure. And then other people never celebrate. They just go from goal to goal to goal. And it's really important to take the time because when you celebrate, then you're acknowledging your success. Um, you usually bring other people into the celebration with you and it just fuels more success. It gives you time to really reflect. You're celebrating yourself, uh, your, your mindset. It gets endorphins going when you celebrate and it, brings you to a level of, you know what, I want to do it even bigger next time. Like, okay, this time we had dinner. Next time let's have dinner in Paris or, you know, let's just keep celebrating even bigger. And it brings you closer to your dreams when you celebrate. Yeah, that's right. That's right, indeed. I always got to remember to celebrate too. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So fun question I've been dropping on guests because I'm actually funny enough, you got uh, three books, right? I do. That's right. That's right, indeed. I think one of them has a freaking, well, all of them have great times, but one of them was Passionistas, and another one's like Super Habits of High Achieving Women. Uh, success mistaken. Habits of Super Achievers. Close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Success Habits of Super Achievers. All right, cool. So if that book was a food item, what would it be and why? Hmm. It would be probably some kind of a stew that just had a combination of all kinds of delicious goodness in it that took a long time to cook and uh, a lot of hard work had to go into making it. But at the end, it became delicious and beautiful and it fed lots of people. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the police for you. They fed a lot of people. The feds, but <laughs> 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 uh, first time i got stew for that question i've been loving it been loving it indeed awesome. yeah. first time i've been That's asked that nice. question <laughs> <laughs> good all right let's keep it that way because i'm like man folks are always trying to be the same let's let's get them really thinking outside the box let's uh describe their books since we're all about promoting wonderful work here so any other future books in the works for you Kelly? You know 
Not right now. I don't, I'm not feeling a book this year. I've got the three books out and they're awesome books that really give people hope. That's the, what they were about. Um, I do have a program with my, what I call intentionally fabulous and it's a single redefined. I don't know if I'll turn that into a book, but it's an awesome program that's available to any women who are just so tired of being sad and depressed and frustrated and want to be fabulous. Yes, girl. That's right. That's right. It's like, are you fabulous? <laughs> nah, girl. I'm intentionally fabulous. Like, that's right. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. Oh, you intentionally fabulous. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. I say fabulous a lot, but that's the next level right there. You it gotta is. intentionally be fabulous. That's right. Otherwise, it won't happen. That's right, indeed. That's right. Be like Kelly, y'all. That's right. Instead of being like Bob, be like Kelly. Be intentionally fabulous. Indeed, y'all. That's right. The IF. That's right. No, it's not intermittent fasting, even though that's freaking amazing. But it is. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All about the intermittent fasting. Oh, yeah. Like, does your body wonders? Like, my God. <laughs> Just the energy that comes afterwards. I do it every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're in the current year of 2022 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Love people. I mean, that's what it's all about. I believe that we're here to love people, and unless we're doing that, I mean, that's what makes a difference in the world. And the number one need that everyone has is to be unconditionally loved. No one human can fill that need, but we can all just put deposits in people's buckets, whether it's making someone feel seen and heard or encouraged, give someone hope. So I would say start by going out and loving people. You love enough people, you help them get what they want, you're going to get what you want. Boom. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right. She knows how to rock the mic, y'all. That's right. The rock the mic indeed. Making those love deposits, y'all. That's right. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. Those unconditional love bank deposits, y'all. That's right. But y'all got a bank account of love, y'all. So share some unconditional love with somebody today. Folks are going to need it indeed. Kind word, a smile, if it's uh, virtual. I know this pandemic is a giant dragon that doesn't want to hibernate yet. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So for those who want to keep in contact and probably even want to be intentionally fabulous with you, what's the best way for folks to do so, Kelly? They can go to my website, Kelly with an I, calabrese.com. Uh, they can email me. I answer every me email. I love to hear from people. And that's Kelly at kellycalabrese.com. And uh, if they're a woman who's just going through any season of separation, divorce, post-divorce, intentionallyfabulous.com. I have an awesome Facebook page where we talk about the hard things, we laugh, we support each other, and, and get people to intentionally fabulous. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot. So, and you still uh, tag team up with the podcast Fit Over 50, right? Yes, we're actually on a little sabbatical with that right now because my partner is launching some amazing things. But if anyone is 50 and over and wants to be fit, we have a rocking Facebook page, Fit Over 50 Life. And wow, so much activity, so much encouragement, cool people just getting healthy and helping each other get there. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, y'all. That's right. It's like one of our past guests say, be bold, never old. So Fit Over 50 Podcast, check out that great contact. Keep in contact with Kelly and all the stuff that she's doing indeed, y'all. Because no matter how many evil things you get in the mailbox about gravestones and senior discounts, avoid it like the plague. Embrace your fabulosity, y'all. Stay fit as long as you can and go as long as you can. And continue to be bold as opposed to old indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop, Kelly? Uh, yeah, I would say let love win. That's always my motto. That's the lens I look through to um, lead my life. And if you're down today, just get the confidence to get back up. Just live in gratitude and learn something new today. Give someone your smile. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one listening right now. Thanks a bunch for sharing some of your time out of your day to listen to this podcast. 
to take it to the next level, be sure to share it with someone that you care about and that would get something out of this podcast too. Advance others to advance yourself.